What you guys got another video here for you on how to remove malware from your Windows PC. Now we have a, a nasty Trojan miner which puts the CPU at 100% here. Now there is an actual mining program which you can use that is similar to this, but this has been adapted to act like a Trojan and it is very difficult to remove. As you can see here, this is a remote session that I'm doing here and this system was infected with this Trojan here. Now there is a legitimate script you can download which is called XMRig Miner and basically that is a legit script which you can use for mining. This one on the other hand has been adapted to use that similar architecture and make your CPU run at 100%. There is no way of closing this down. If you try to close these processes down they just restart themselves and it is very difficult to stop and use the PC because the CPU is at 100% as you can see here. So if you are using the XM Rig Miner script, the official one, then that is not a Trojan, that is a legitimate script, whereas this one is an actual Trojan, and it will be on the system, and it's very difficult to kill. As you can see here, when I kill these processes, they just restart themselves, and that alone makes it very difficult to remove. Now, this computer was completely unusable because obviously the CPU is maxed out at 100%, and it made it very difficult to do anything, especially when we're using a remote connection here to remove this remotely and we are connected to a Wi-Fi connection which made it even harder. So I went ahead and started to try to remove these processes but unfortunately that was not the case. I couldn't do it. They kept restarting and what I wanted to do is go to the location where this XM rig miner uh, virus was so I can take a look at the files there and see what it looks like to see whether this was a legitimate program because at one point I thought it might be just a legit program that that person had installed unfortunately that was not the case and this turned out to be malware or Trojan on the system so as you can see here it is running on the system and there's quite a few of these instances running so you can see it's taxing the PC completely down to 100% CPU usage the memory is at 80% usage as well which really made the system sluggish so I went to uninstall a program here. Let's click on this one here and we'll take a look inside here to see if there was an actual program that was running which we could uninstall, which was this program because at first I did some research on the XM Rig Miner and I thought it was a legit program that was used for mining, uh, you know, Bitcoin. And uh, when I looked there, there was no program, no uninstaller, nothing like that. So I thought myself, it's definitely not something that he's downloaded and installed. Um, intentionally to do crypto mining and of course I was talking to the client and asking them whether there was some sort of uh, program that they've installed and he said nope he didn't install anything one day he woke up and the CPU was running at 100% so now we know that it's not a program that he's downloaded and installed intentionally to do crypto mining it must be some sort of Trojan or malware on the system so what I did I went back to task manager here and I right clicked and I opened file in location to see what type of files they are and whether we could do anything with them. So you can see here is the actual folder here. It's called in program data in the C drive on win files. It's called uh, the xmrig.exe and there's a bunch of script files here and batch files you can see there as well. And there's an mmm1.exe dot exe and an sas dot exe and a bunch of other files in here which are to do with this particular rig now whether this is mining for the person who has put it on the system i really don't know um, but basically we need to get rid of it on the computer because obviously the computer is not usable so what i decided to do next was enable uh, the pid area so i could see uh, the process id so what I wanted to do here is right click on this little area here and enable the PID here. And this will then give me a little list of PIDs. And you can see there's different PIDs for these. So what I wanted to do next was open up a command prompt and terminate these uh, PIDs one at a time to see whether that will allow me to uh, get control of the system. And uh, unfortunately, when I was doing it, this, uh, they were just restarting. So even if I end task or force... Uh, termination of these it just wouldn't let me do anything so let me show you what I did here to show you uh, how to use these PIDs here so we can end these uh, tasks 
So for that, we opened up a command prompt here with administrator privileges. And what we're going to do is type in here task kill and space forward slash F space forward slash PID and the PID that you want to terminate. In this case, we'll try one of these uh, PID numbers. And what we'll do is we'll type that in and we'll literally kill this process off. So what I was hoping is when I was doing the uh, task kill space forward slash F space forward slash PID with the PID, which is the process ID number, hopefully this will terminate these processes one at a time and we would then get control of the system. At least we wouldn't have 100% CPU usage. Unfortunately, as I was going through here and terminating each of these processes, they kept restarting themselves with a new process which tells me it's malicious sort of behavior because that's sort of exactly what malware does. You t try to terminate it and then it will restart itself. So this was just creating more processes. And as I was terminating them, as you can see here, they were just recreating new ones uh, at the bottom of the list here. So this method won't work. So what I wanted to do next was to get Process Explorer and try to suspend uh, these processes from there or terminate the process tree and try to do them all in one fell swoop and uh, we'll need to download that program and give that a go as well now the person already uh, tried running malware bytes and it couldn't remove it apparently he said he run malware bytes on it and it kept terminating the process or something along those lines so what we're going to do here is just go ahead and get process explorer here this is a free tool you can download, which was created by Mark uh, Rusevich, I think his name was. And basically, uh, you, you can download this and use this. This is a, a more advanced uh, process explorer, so we can literally terminate some of these processes. So I'm going to open this up, and this is what it looks like here. And what we're going to do here is come down, and we should see now all of the processes here. And if you right-click on these and terminate these you can terminate them and uh, delete from the actual tree here say kill process tree you can do that as well but it's not doing anything so what i tried to do here next is suspend these processes so basically it's not terminating them it's putting them to sleep basically so i went through and put all of these processes to sleep i.e suspend them so it's not going to restart new ones hopefully by doing this because we're not actually terminating them, we're just ter putting them to sleep by suspending them. So once I did all of this and went through all of these processes, as you can see here, there's quite a few of them. I'll speed this process up as to not bore you. And basically I went through here and put all of these into suspend mode. And you can see them utilizing uh, the system resources here. So what I did then once I suspended them all is navigated to this location here which is where the folder reside. And I just renamed all of the files inside there .old rather than having the extensions what they had before. Because they're suspended, it's allowing me now to rename these. Before I tried to delete these and rename them, but because they were running, uh, you can't do that. It, it won't allow you to do it. So now I've suspended all of the process. It's not actually running in the background. I can now right click and rename all of these files rather than having .sys, I can have this uh, dot old and the scripts dot old and everything else you will need to show file extensions to be able to do this but you can see all of these files now are renamed dot old so i've got all these renamed and hopefully uh, once i terminate all of these suspended processes here it won't be able to restart itself because i've renamed them and that's exactly what my method was here to try to claw back the system resources on this pc so you can see here now what i'm going to do is close this off here and we're going to go over to here, right click on here and kill all processes and go through here and terminate all of these suspended processes here now. And as you can see, I am terminating all of these. It does take a bit of time, but they are not restarting themselves. And that's because it can't restart because I've renamed all of the files to .old. So it's not running correctly. So with me terminating all of these now, you can see we're getting some sort of system resources back. The system is now running as it should be without using 100% CPU usage. I'm just going to terminate all of the ones that I need to terminate here. And once that is done, we can then delete that folder, hopefully. So it's just going to kill off 
a few more of these uh, processes here and we'll move back into the actual folder here. So here is the folder with the uh, Trojan or malware inside here and I'm going to delete these and you can see now because the processes are not running it allows me to delete these files which is exactly what I wanted to do. I'm now going to go ahead and delete the folder and that is now removed and I'm just going to have a quick scout around here and see if there's any more malicious uh, files which are related to that uh, Trojan and see if I can find them and remove them. They're probably going to be in app data or some sort of area like that so we need to uh, remove uh, those uh, files from that location. So what I'm going to do next is uh, go to that location here so let me come out of here and I'm going to go into our downloads folder make sure there's no files inside here and that's all been cleaned out and I'm going to now go to our search feature here and what we're going to do is type in here percentage app data percentage and go to that location and this will take me to the location where I can look for more files which are related to that particular uh, malware or virus so let's go ahead and do this here and we can now see we've got app data and it should see the roaming area click on this one here and this will take us to this location here I'm just having a little quick look inside here to see whether there's any files that are related to this I can see a few files inside here 127 uh, dot temp and other things like that so I will remove these uh, particular types of files as well and delete them from the system you can see them down the bottom here so just in case they're related to anything and they are pretty recent on here so I'll remove all of these and I'm also going to go into this area here you can see minor so I'm going to remove that uh, folder as well which was related to that particular Trojan as well now I'm going to download some software I'm going to download Hitman Pro and run a quick scan on here see if it finds any other sort of stuff here and you can see it wants to do some uh, repairs to the windsock and it also wants to do some repairs to the PC it's already starting to detect cookies I'm not too worried about cookies it's more file types and files and infections that I'm uh, more concerned about and you can see it's identified 12 different threats here I've blurred this out uh, because obviously uh, it has the person's username on here so I'm just gonna uh, hide this uh, information and you can see here identified threats 14 now and we have 76 traces which I'm not too concerned about so mainly get rid of all of the threats here so threats detected 96 let's remove all of these and we're going to reboot the system so I'm going to clean these off reboot the system and I'll reconnect to the remote support instance here and we're going to download ESET online scanner and run a full system scan and uh, remove these and basically once we've run this full scan uh, it did didn't detect any more malware it was fully clean and uh, we just basically went along and cleaned up a little bit more and created a nice clean restore point I deleted all these old restore points uh, just because uh, of any sort of infections that may be residing inside these old system restore points also I made sure that his antivirus program was running and again when you look inside here you can see his virus protection program had been turned off and this has been turned off either by the Trojan or malware itself or the person has turned it off themselves either way it's not good to have no antivirus on your system so what we're going to do is get this re-enabled it wouldn't let me turn this back on so I'm going to go into the settings here to make sure you can see this has been grayed out here so it's more than likely malware that has actually uh, stopped that from going back on so I'm just going to toggle a bunch of these on here and then hopefully we can get this back on and get it back up and running so we're going to go through here just going to have a little look inside the control folder area I'm going to turn this on as well for ransomware and say yes here and we now have the real-time protection all working everything's working okay now for the antivirus program this will be good enough until he decides what he wants to do with antivirus protection unless he wants to stay with Windows Defender or Windows Security as it's known now uh, but that is now removed and I'll leave this scan in here and I'll remove any other uh, stuff like uh, system restore points off camera a little bit of a tricky one this one because it won't let you do anything on the PC because it was so slow and that is because the CPU was at 100% and the memory was also at 80 plus percent and it made the PC unusable so it made it very difficult to do anything so this is the 
a way that I dealt with it. I mean, you could do with it 101 different ways, but that is the way that I went with it today, and it got rid of it, and that's the main thing. Once the CPU come back down to a reasonable level, I could then move around on the PC freely and do other things and other checks. But until that point, we had to stop those processes, which kept restarting. So another one bites the dust. That one is done and dusted onto the next and of course, if you've got problems like this, you can always drop on our Discord server for help and advice, and I'll do my best to help you out over there if I'm available. Anyway, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Hope this video has helped you out. Just want to say a big shout out to my YouTube members. I shall see you again real soon. Bye for now.